Wondering which Minecraft mod pack that you should play? Or maybe you're searching for the perfect Minecraft mod pack to play with your friends. Well, you found the exact right video, Vaults. Released by the Technic team, Vaults is one of the original technology mod packs, featuring a nice roster of mods in the tech genre, which utilize a standardized electricity system, allowing for some awe-inspiring possibilities with the new power solutions and offerings that you have at your fingertips. This was a groundbreaking mod pack at the time, and I remember some crazy creations being built with it. Overgrown. You begin in a post apocalyptic world in this mod pack, within a cityscape where the survival of humanity was uncertain and zombies have taken over. As one of the survivors who hid away in the bunkers, you have to travel alone or in small groups to search for valuable resources and clues as to what happened. This large exploration mod pack takes place in a procedurally generated open cityscape that's in ruin, overgrown, and strangled by nature, and overrun by wild animals and other dangers too. Within in these ruined buildings are the resources and items that you need to survive, so you'll need to explore them to gather loot to be able to process some food and water to stay as one of the living. The idea here is to follow the long questing trees in the pack to make some headway, building up your base and hopefully trying to set up a place of salvation for the long haul. Glacial Awakening. You start out buried below, trapped in a 3x3 entombment inside a glacier where darkness shrouds your view. This questing pack starts you off with the task of breaking from your prison chamber of ice. It plays just like Skyblock does, offering a limited space and a set of resources with a progression tree that you must follow as you attempt to survive in a vast open expanse of snow and ice. Mystical Village 2. This pack has great world generation through the open terrain generator and biome bundle mods that allow for larger scale and very realistic biome generation using custom world gen presets and custom biomes. This is a mod pack all about the elements of magic with themes of adventure and dungeon crawling with challenging levels featuring all new mobs and loot down below. There are many legendary beasts of fantasy here, such as rideable dragons or unicorns you can seek. The Electro Blobs Wizardry mod lets you create custom spells to cast. You can also venture to the mystical world of the Twilight Forest where other adventurers await you. A side quest is to work towards constructing a stronghold defended by NPCs with the Ancient Warfare mod, decorating it with the various furniture mods in the pack. There's a lot to do in this mod pack if you didn't realise. <laughs> Tech It Classic. 
This might not be the most pleasant mod pack for new players of Minecraft because it's on an old version of the game. This is my favourite mod pack of all time, the original Tech It pack. It's a mod pack on Minecraft 1.2.5, an older pack that's entirely focused around the element of technology. This mod pack lets you construct machinery, industrializing your world with new factory utilities. This pack features both Industrial Craft 2 and Build Craft, mods that allow you to create huge quarries and mining wells for industrial mining, electronic furnaces and machinery for ore processing and complete automation, and power generation solutions such as solar panels and solar arrays. The equivalent exchange mod, the original Project E, is a mod that lets you make use of alchemy to duplicate items or generate and reuse energy, known as EMC, to transmute items into others. Something which you may be familiar with if you've seen the Full Metal Alchemist anime. Regrowth. Regrowth is a mod pack that's all about reforming nature in a world where it has gone missing, and the problem must be solved for a world to thrive once more. This mod pack makes use of Agricraft and Britannia, two great natural mods. You spawn in a wasteland in this pack, completely derelict of Mother Nature's influence. All there is are dead logs that you must somehow repurpose into usable wood. The shortage of both good and natural material is a very real problem here, and thriving and surviving is a challenge. Although it's a slow process, the biomes will be very fruitful once you improve them from the ground up. Pokemon Adventure. This won't be the only Pokemon pack that we feature on this list, but it deserves a spot due to the very different mods it runs in comparison to, say, Pixelmon for an example. With this pack, you can try to catch them all as you have an abundance of Pokemon around. The main mod that this mod pack makes use of is Pokecube, a mod that adds Pokemon to Minecraft. But these aren't hyper-realistic, impressively detailed models like Pixelmon. This mod actually adds Pokemon that are respective to Minecraft's art style. These Mojang looking Pokemon mobs can be put versus each other with a mod's combat system, with dynamic changeable moves and world interaction. You can even make use of your Pokemon to cut trees or dig holes for you. They're basically pets that actually do your bidding, which is kind of cool. Crusader Craft. Crusader Craft is my personal mod pack. It features all of my Minecraft mods, primarily the Crusader Craft mod, which is based on ages of time, as well as having custom fantasy items and elements. This mod is currently in development, but if you want early access to it, you can follow my Patreon, link down in the description below, for early access to the alpha and beta builds of the mod to try it out. We also plan to relaunch the server for the mod and mod pack, hopefully sometime next year. You start out with humble primitive beginnings 
as you create makeshift armor from bountiful resources such as wood and leaves, as well as crafting basic tools such as wooden spears and flint tools. As you progress, you'll acquire stronger armor like bone armor or a bone club weapon from bones. You can also use flint to create a blade to harvest certain crops, to acquire special plant fiber to create more useful items. Along with this, you can grow industrial plants which can be made into items that give potion effects or benefits to the player. There's a lot of useful gear such as prospectors to pan for gold or iron pieces in the water, or fishing nets to automatically catch fish in rivers. The biomes in the game are also abundant. You can find huge snowy peaks modelled after the European Alps, Austrian food as well as many other cultural items that you can bake or cook, and upgrades to nearly every biome in the game, such as the jungle where you'll find gorillas, tameable monkeys, brand new villages with different types of jungle villages in them, and tribes, and hundreds of new mobs with custom models. Like I said, if you do want to play this mod pack and my Crusader Craft mod, become a member on my Patreon to support the channel and get access to the mod and the mod packs, early development builds, and all of my other mods as a gift to you. Link is in the description down below, and it will also really help support the channel in turn. SevTech Ages. This huge mod pack is all about progression and it has a boatload of content within it, with the different tiers gated behind progression walls. For an example, certain ores are actually hidden until they're unlocked, and certain items and recipes for said items are unlocked based on your progress, and many of the mobs don't physically appear until you're past a certain point, something that adds a factor of uniqueness and merit to this particular mod pack. SevTech utilizes the original vanilla Minecraft advancement system as its guide to show players the line of progression that they must follow to achieve endgame in the mod pack, guiding them through hundreds of custom advancements that allow them to unlock the so-called ages, which contain different progression trees based off of certain mods, many of which are custom. You start out as a nobody in this mod pack, basically with nothing but a handful of items and recipes at your fingertips, and there's a steep learning curve due to the heavy presence of mainly tech mods. But the great part about SevTech is that it's very compatible with multiplayer, which means you can play with with friends due to the FTB Teams mod, basically allowing you to sync progress between your teammates, preventing you from being left behind by other team members. Pixelmon Reforged. One of the greatest mods of all time, Pixelmon is a mod that brings the world of Pokemon to life in 3D in Minecraft. The Pixelmon mod adds Pokemon to the world which can be captured and battled with other trainers and exploration. This mod pack includes some companion mods to make the experience more playable and slightly easier. For an example, there's a completely custom soundtrack, a fully interfaced world map to set waypoints on and see where you're going, all new biomes for a varied worldscape, compasses 
sensors to locate the biomes and structures more easily in the world, and markers for where certain loot objects are to easily acquire them. Now, if you love Pokemon, you'll love Pixelmon and the Pixelmon Reforged mod pack, as it has many quality of life mods to really complement the base mod here and make it easier for beginner players who want to learn the mod. I was showed the Pixelmon mod by someone and I really enjoyed playing it and we had a great time on this mod pack. Although I have to admit, I didn't really know what I was doing most of the time when I originally played, but it was still fun. Now, Pixelmon is kind of a little bit of a complex mod, so it's probably a surprise to most people that I'm covering it on a beginner mod pack video, but that's just because of the mods in this pack that makes it a little bit easier and lowers the learning curve. Journey Beyond the Abyss. This mod pack is focused around being as immersive as possible. You start out with humble beginnings as you find yourself situated in the middle of an unknown ocean on top of a sandbar next to an almost bottomless trench and strange looking platform. As you progress deeper into the storyline, you uncover the dark secrets of the abyss, progressing further as you go farther in the exploration potential the world has to offer across its many islands, deep dungeons and underwater cities and ghost ships in a land where you can find easter eggs and secrets. The progression system in this mod pack features game stages, a series of custom NPCs and a quest outline that forces the player along a linear story which is based along a linear story based pack to advance through the content, making changes to core recipes to make it progressively increase in its difficulty curve as it adds the requirement of unlocking certain mods and their content along the way. There's a lot of danger in this pack, dangerous enemies and foes, scary viruses and infections or negative potion effects and powerful monsters. Certain new survival metrics need to be taken care of and monitored, namely the temperature system and also the new weight system. Each point of progression in this mod pack is outlined just like a puzzle is, meaning you need to seek alternatives to acquire resources and look for solutions. The content is split into 13 separate chapters, each with special challenges and milestones. As each chapter unlocks, the difficulty gets harder and things are more complex. There are hundreds of hours of content in this pack, boasting up to 2,000 potential hours of gameplay. The official TARDIS mod pack. Centered around the Doctor Who universe, this mod pack lets you fly around and explore with the TARDIS, letting you customize its interior and jump around to new locations. You can regenerate as the Doctor when you die, totaling up to 12 different times, and you must be aware of the dangerous weeping angels that may spawn in the graveyard structures around the world. With this new TARDIS mod, you'll have to maintain and manage your TARDIS after restoring a stranded unit underground, letting you travel to different dimensions or coordinates and expand its interior via extra rooms and customization options. Fiction Craft Atomic Space The original inspiration behind this mod pack is a Chinese novel called Wesley Atomic Space. It's a progression mod pack with rich lore behind it. The difficulty level of this pack is towards the tougher side of things. It's more of an expert level pack than anything, and and it can be likened to the expert difficulty of the All The Mods 3 mod pack, although potentially may even be a little bit harder. After awakening within Ice Confused, you're thrown into an icy planet of darkness in a unique Skyblock style experience. The progression is separated into seven different total chapters, featuring an FTB shop system where you can acquire resources and special items from. This pack is built upon the elements of tech, magic and exploration, with over 630 quests that guide you through the way of its path in the icy dimension where no ores generate. In fact, it utilizes three separate resource generation methods which are unlocked as you progress. These are through tree generation, one involving fluids and another via chickens. The planet is at a low temperature with heavy radiation. The goal is to explore the planet's mantle and inner core and the danger zone of the neighboring planet, with the ability to also venture to and explore the twilight forest dimension too. Dig Sight Built to play with 1-4 to four players cooperatively, the Dig Site mod pack is a story based progression mod pack which is centred around an inclusive custom map in which you are the hero who is attempting to save a world in a modern sci-fi adventure where you'll stumble across secrets and puzzles on your adventures through hidden bases and weird and wonderful points of interest as you take on quests to advance in the story, fighting along the way. This arid world is exceptionally dangerous during the night and there are many new threats during the day that roam, with general civil 
civilization coming to a standstill. You will be rewarded for your exploration in this pack via different loot opportunities and there's also a few small parkour challenges and some action like you'd expect from a movie. Star Wars Minecraft Edition. This pack is for those Star Wars fans out there just like myself. It's a large scale mod pack to celebrate the May the 4th and Revenge of the 5th dates. Its main feature is the original Part C Star Wars mod which adds a boatload of diverse content from Star Wars into Minecraft. From blasters to armor sets from the Rebels and Empire and various points in the galactic timeline. Vehicles such as the spaceships likened to the X-Wing or TIE fighters that you can actually fly and use to travel to the different planets in the galaxy. For an example, you can go and join the Rebels at their secret base on Hoth, or venture out to Mos Eisley and Tatooine, and buy blasters, or venture out to the Sandy Tundra. Aliens and Parasites You take on the role of a crazy individual locked away in an asylum in the story behind this mod pack, suffering from psychosis, troubling to distinguish reality from fiction. There are three modes in this pack. Survival mode, to survive for as long as you can suffer on hardcore, quest mode for more of a story-based guideline, and multi player mode which is the one optimized for servers, each having a different backstory to them and completely new setting. The Final Frontier 2 This is a sequel to the original pack in the same series, and the purpose of this one is to use technology to your advantage in outer space. The pack strays away from any element or theme of magic, instead focusing upon machinery and teaching you to learn how to operate it. The idea is to create something spectacular, from the immense infrastructure added with the create mod to the pure automation you can scaled to in your mechanism factories. There's a lot of potential in your journey to the stars. If you're interested in building specialized machines to make your life easier, or to automate things and create impressive looking setups, or if you just want to travel out to explore space, this is a space exploration mod pack that you should be keeping your eye on. Portal Content The Portal Content mod pack is a pack that aims to offer a wide selection of various map making tools and content to create impressive maps with diverse and specialized unique experiences and mechanics to them. That means you can expect a lot of quality of life mods thrown in here, from better builders ones, chisel, the connected textures mod, jump plates, open block elevator and more. However, its main theme is of course Portal, the video game that is. Because of this, it has various themed mods based off the Portal content, and the experiences from the first and second Portal games. First of all, there's the Portal Gun, where you can create an entry and exit portal to move around a map or puzzle. Portal Gels, just like in the second game. Portal Blocks, which is purely for decoration in the style of the flat white Portal 3D elements. And also Open Modular Turrets, which is similar in a sense to the Portal Turrets 2. Space Settlers the overworld experience in this pack is reminiscent of what is in vanilla, although there's the Space Dimensions mod for accessing areas of outer space through building a space rocket to travel forth to the solar system where you can find a world to settle on. In space, you'll need to create buildings and settlements that are sealed so that breathing is possible, and so villagers can survive too, along with some of their new professions which are added. The different planets offer slightly new resources to each other, some that are important for building and upgrading the spaceship. Currently, there's the potential to go to the Moon, Mars, Mercury, Ganymede, Titan, Europa, and Io. Space Astronomy 2 This space-based mod pack comprises of many popular space and tech-themed mods for exploring the universe. You have an outline of what you need to do through the achievement book that offers you a set path via its steps to show you what needs to be completed next. This mod pack has a lot of content in it, and it's one of the most popular ones in this genre. You can build complex computer systems, construct advanced solar panel arrays, use the power of the star constellations with astral sorcery, upgrade your body through cyberware for human augmentation, and build up a series of complex machinery structures within your outer space factories on a large set of planetary options to visit and habituate on. Hexit. Hexit is an adventure mod pack that's perfect solo or when playing with friends. It's a legendary campaign based mod pack of rich adventure where you'll come upon a deep dark set of dungeons below ground, large towers and spires, arid ruins and magic that you can seek out. The idea here is to grow in your wealth and progress through the pack and create strong items to aid you, taming beasts along the way and attempting to become well versed in the fantasy world laid at your fingertips. This pack puts adventure above everything else, so you won't need to learn countless complex things, you can put the fun first and just explore the structures and sites of the world and experience what the pack has to offer. Inspired by Dungeons and Dragons, this mod pack takes you on an exploration adventure upon pirate ships and deep into ruins as you try to survive challenges, mostly when you're ill-equipped or running into threats for the first time. Enig 
Enigmatica 2. This mod pack is absolutely huge, so if you're a seasoned player, hear me out. The reason why I think this pack is great for beginners is because there's so much variation in its mods. It's what's called a kitchen sink mod pack, where there's a ton of mods and a little bit of everything. This large mod pack has over 800 different quests based on the 250 or so mods added into the pack, adding everything from magic to multi-block machines, new ores and tools, and power generation. For explorers though, or players wanting to keep it simple, you can just choose to explore the many new beautiful biomes or jump to the additional dimensions to see what's on offer there for you. Because the pack itself is so big, it's great for building as there's micro blocks and specialized building blocks, a lot of different tech options to aspire to acquire, countless magic mods such as Astral Sorcery for using the power of the stars, or Batania for using the plants of the natural world, and a multitude of adventuring mods such as Ancient Warfare for an arsenal from ancient history. Peace of mind. This beginner-friendly pack of mods is based upon a questline system which is designed around being played on peaceful difficulty, meaning you don't have to worry about evil monsters or enemies of the night. The quest book has over 250 quests to guide you through the mod's content, all being either equally fun or challenging. Many of the mods in this pack are centered around the themes of magic or tech, although it isn't the main focus. There are some quality of life improvements or small mods to make the gameplay better also. This is a particularly relaxing pack, mainly due to the ability to play on peaceful mode, to focus on building, and just feeling tranquil. If you want to slowly learn how to play mods and be guided via a quest book with goals that feel like you're accomplishing something, or if you're new to modded Minecraft and just want to experience a varied collection of mods to try out, this is probably the mod pack that you should ideally be playing. The Simple Life 2. The idea here is innovation and creativity and challenge. The mod pack prides itself in utilizing some slightly lesser known mods or lesser known features of popular mods, letting you learn along the way as you complete the core quest book. You can create and set up an economy in your colony, which will be equipped with NPC workers like farmers to collect resources for you, and also some vanilla recipes are modified slightly for certain items and blocks. The quest book itself though has over 500 different quests in its quest line, and these aren't all boring collect and drop off style quests. If you want to build on the side, there are some good mods to do that. When a Ending on your path, you want to keep your main focus on one thing, technology, magic, or progression, and focus on one of these mods at once in order to keep your path clear and not make things confusing along the way. FTB Sky Odyssey Sky Odyssey is a skyblock style mod pack that makes use of several brand new custom mods that let you generate power and EMC to never before seen levels, which you can make use of to open a portal to a brand new location named Dimension X. The idea of this mod pack was spawned from very complex initial packs that offered nothing to spend with your generated EMC which is usually from burning items and blocks to generate energy to use for duplication. The bonsai pots let you grow miniature sized trees in pots which you can then auto harvest and infuse with mana to increase their growth rates. The FTB guides mod system offers some new quest lines and reward offerings and the FTB money mod allows the mod pack to make use of a virtual currency for money tracking. The beast coin miner lets you leverage excess power that you have to turn into coins and a new machine which generates crazy levels of power. This is a relaxing mod pack which is great to play alongside friends with, and it brings a completely different experience to what you're probably used to, especially in the skyblock genre. FTB Academy. This mod pack is featured here because it was genuinely designed for people who've never played mods before. Learning mods usually requires scraping the internet, watching videos like this one, or reading countless articles and wiki guides. Academy is a mod pack designed for people with zero experience, bringing an offering of more than 300 quests which guide you step by step through the progression tree featuring the most common mods, also showcasing over 100 pages of guides content for more in-depth explanation for the more complex content to keep everything inside the game. You begin in a school structure where you can then follow quests and learn concepts from automation using the technology teachings and also learn magic mods. Once you complete the beginner fundamentals, you're then teleported to begin in the overworld. This is one of those mod packs that holds your 
hand while you're learning, so it's perfect for people who've never actually played with any kind of mod before. FTB University. Consider this mod pack a step up from FTB Academy. It's designed as a sequel of sorts. Whilst the previous pack taught you to learn mods from step zero, this mod pack aims to teach more intrinsic fundamentals of mods and offer deeper information and tutorials for more advanced and complex segments of modding. This mod pack has slightly more quests than the previous, totaling to over 1200 quests, which are broken down into a collection of over 28 different chapters. The main mods of each genre have their own chapter and they're split into category based groups. This is not exactly an expert pack though, but some recipes, although unaltered, are quest gated, so you have to progress to unlock certain content here. Dungeons Origins Featuring the Origins mod, this mod pack lets you choose a class, aka an Origin, which could start you out as an Enderman, or a Pillager, or even a Blaze or a Piglin in the Nether. Each Origin offers unique gameplay that makes each playthrough different. There's tons of mob-based Origins to choose from, and a lot of new structures in the overworld to make it feel renewed and to decorate the Nether along with its new modded biomes. You'll see battle towers to plunder and loot, better caves and upgraded mineshafts, greater dungeons, and a series of better biomes than what is present in vanilla. The weapons and armor sets added are from medieval times, but are also from both Minecraft Story Mode and Minecraft Dungeons, with all of the Minecraft Earth mobs being added too. The Adventure Z mod also offers some challenging bosses with really great armor and weapons drops to actually collect. Think of this as the ultimate Minecraft that features content from all of the games lined up in its franchise, Farming Valley. This is perhaps the third time that I've actually featured this mod pack in a top 10 mod packs video, and that's because every time someone asks me to mention a good quality mod pack that's beginner friendly, I always seem to echo back to Farming Valley. This mod pack takes its inspiration from Stardew Valley and Harvest Moon, negating the need for endless grinding, but adding in the ability to build up a small farm town which you can expand and maintain to progress through in the game. Spawning the goddess NPC, you learn from her how to advance through the four seasons, which offer different crops to buy and harvest. The idea is to slowly build up your settlement, buy plants, and harvest the special crops and then make a profit by selling them to the NPCs to acquire money. This mod is slow paced but it feels really rewarding. It has great music and it just feels like a different game and anyone who loves farming games or farming sims will feel like Minecraft's far more fun when playing with this mod pack. Pixelmon Reforged One of the greatest mods of all time, Pixelmon is a mod that brings the world of Pokemon to life in 3D in Minecraft. The Pixelmon mod adds Pokemon to the world which can be captured and battled with other trainers and exploration. This mod pack includes some companion mods to make the experience more playable and slightly easier. For an example, there's a completely custom soundtrack, a fully interfaced world map to set waypoints on and see where you're going, all new biomes for a varied worldscape, compasses to locate the biomes and structures more easily in the world, and markers for where certain loot objects are to easily acquire them. Now if you love Pokemon, you'll love Pixelmon and the Pixelmon Reforged mod pack, as it has many quality of life mods to really complement the base mod here and make it easier for beginner players who want to learn the mod. I was showed the Pixelmon mod by someone and I really enjoyed playing it and we had a great time on this mod pack. Although I have to admit I didn't really know what I was doing most of the time when I originally played, but it was still fun. Now, Pixelmon is kind of a little bit of a complex mod, so it's probably a surprise to most people that I'm covering it on a beginner mod pack video, but that's just because of the mods in this pack that makes it a little bit easier and lowers the learning curve. Dreamcraft When spawning in the world, this is a very typical survival experience, yet the game is at a higher FOV. There are some changes to the environment that are noticeable, and the presence of sodium, the mod, can be noticed for its performance improvements. This mod pack features the Terralith Data Pack mod for improved generation, which covers both the overworld, the nether, and the end to make for a very beautiful world. Not to mention, it features many industrialization based mods like Applied Energistics, Tech Reborn, Quarry Plus, and Expanded Storage. There are also additions to the end and nether with the better end and better nether mods. This is a nice pack with enhancements to vanilla while still feeling like you're playing the base game, and there are some nice features in there for engineers and builders alike. Decorations Mod Pack For everyone who wants to decorate their buildings, 
to improve how they look indoors, this mod pack is probably your best bet, containing many decorative elements, items and blocks to make everything look wonderful on the interior. You have mods for cooking and appliances that have real applications and actually work, old school bookcases and furniture, storage drawers, better fences and stable pieces, lanterns and lighting solutions for the outside areas and features like improved window frames and decorative panels. This is basically just a house or base building wonder pack. If you're all about building, this is probably the pack which you want to choose from this list. It's less focused on adventure, but more focused on making something which looks really cool. Mine Colonies Exploration Edition. The purpose of this pack is to provide a full experience which is based around the town and civilizations building mod Mine Colonies, letting you construct a thriving colony with the benefit of various other complementary mods to make your builds look spectacular inside and out, in the interior and in the exterior. Mine Colonies lets you utilize NPC workers to construct and work around a base to contribute and develop a civilization. You could build anything from a small town to a huge amazing medieval city. This is a really cool mod which definitely changes how Minecraft plays and feels and a mod pack centered around it with some bonus mods for decoration is certainly something which you want to play if you're interested in building a huge city. Abyss Hunter. First up you select an origin which is followed by a class which could be from the nitwit, farmer, rancher, miner, lumberjack, cook, blacksmith, cleric, merchant, explorer, warrior, archer, rogue or beastmaster. Based on your chosen selection, you'll begin with some basic gear. There are improvements to the character's first person camera and the movement to make things seem highly realistic. You'll also notice the presence of first, a new survival metric to make things tougher to survive in. The biomes are very vibrant and beautiful in this pack and regardless of your seed or world that you spawn in, you'll most likely spawn nearby vast structures like giant windmills or modified villages and farms. There are new types of abandoned villages filled with zombie villagers just like in vanilla and plentiful crops and resources to find in this naturally spawning man-made structure and the zones which are like it. Origins 1.19 This mod pack is entirely focused around the Origins mod which lets you choose an origin in game which functions just like a class in an MMORPG game, each with special abilities that help or hinder your gameplay experience. From phasing through blocks and objects as a phantom to having innate wings as an elytrian, there's a range of useful perks and negative effects that make each game playthrough different and unique. The pack also features the extra origins mod, which basically adds more bonus origins and classes to the base origin system, along with a few other minor origin adding mods to flesh out the core mod experience to give you some extra choice. Whitecraft. This mod pack runs on Sodium, a graphics mod that improves performance and allows for higher graphical fidelity and customization, in a similar way to how Optifine does, also giving crop animations for animated grass. The inventory also has a nice little item sorting system which is useful. This pack is targeted mainly for optimized performance and features full controller support and mouse inventory tweaks, with support for shaders which are included in the pack. There's over 100 brand new biomes, nearly 90 new mobs, a plethora of craftables such as furniture, more than 250 brand new structures like overhauled villages and better mineshafts, custom villager trades and wandering trader camps, as well as numerous gameplay tweaks to make improvements upon vanilla. Block fronts. Based on the second war, this mod pack is one of the more unique gun mod based mod packs, featuring groundbreaking combat features for PvP battles online or multiplayer. There's everything from taking enemy capture points to destroying points of interest and ranking up in game whilst battling through war-torn maps across the streets and beaches of France and other popular locations across Europe and the Western Front in the open battlefields. This is one of the better mods and mod packs for multiplayer combat and after choosing from a class across the two different teams, you can try out the range of weaponry in a modern FPS style game environment which is completely fresh for Minecraft. A new game mod pack. This mod pack throws you in an unforgiving world, accompanying you with a ton of mods. You'll spawn with an animal dictionary that's the full guide for learning about all the weird and wonderful creatures in the mod pack's mob adding mod, which is Alex's mobs. This one adds a large number of beautiful vanilla like wildlife, all with a special purpose to them. This is a vanilla plus style pack that adds some new biomes and creatures as well as new structures in the various other dimensions, not just the overworld. There's numerous random and different mods in this pack, so there's something for everyone, from decoration mods for interior design to make some really nice room builds to amazing new mini bosses and beautiful sub biomes to explore. This is one of those kitchen sink mod packs with a ton of cool fun mods within. Medieval Minecraft.
craft. When you first start a world in this pack, you'll have to choose from an origin from the Origins mod. Custom origins that are fancy medieval themed around the genre of this pack. These origins are Elf, Goblin, Knight, Wolf, Fox, Banshee, Daemon, Fae, Necromancer, Paladin, Pixie, Plague Victim, Siren, Werewolf, Yeti, Witch, Evoker, Ikare, Dwarf, Gorgon, Ogre, Troll, Snow Golem, Strider, Guardian, Rubian, and many other vanilla origins from the base mod. You first spawn with two items once you pick an origin, the Biomepedia for biome information, and also the quest book which currently is not supported as the quest mod needs updating. You spawn with some basic armor, I spawned with full leather gear. The inventory screen has two brand new tabs, being attributes and the combats menu. The attributes screen contains all of your in-game skills that can be leveled via assigning level points to them. This screen shows stats like movement, break speed and reach distance, health points and resistances. The combat screen shows combat and fighting stats. The biomes in this mod pack are extremely colourful and vibrant and beautiful and there's a ton of mobs such as brown bears that are very vanilla friendly which will spawn all throughout the world. Better Minecraft. This pack features a custom world generator, Better X, which gives you customizability in terms of custom end terrain generation such as small islands and the ability to change the average biome sizes. One thing to first notice when spawning in the world is the world generation which has some major improvements. From small flora and vegetation changes, brand new mobs and critters to populate the areas and the higher frequency of spawning structures. The first time I spawned in the first world I created, I spawned next to a pillager outpost with a custom pillager warship on the shoreline next to it. These worlds can be dangerous, especially when you just hop in and start out with nothing. The pack also features Oh the Biomes You'll Go, which is responsible for many of the new custom biomes that you'll witness when playing. These can be viewed within the Biomepedia book that you spawn with which shows images of each and every biome, as well as information regarding each like the climate, their temperature, the downfall, precipitation, colours and the mobs which actually spawn in there in their climate. Currently there are no quests available but there are plans for quests to be added to the pack when the FTB quest mod is updated to version 1.19. Planetary after many years of infighting between mankind's nations, Earth was left barren and destroyed after much war-torn years of battle. With few survivors and resources that remain, including scattered oil deposits, you have to attempt to survive as one of the last and try to acquire such resources, using the knowledge of past generations, continuing their legacy in an attempt to escape the planet in order to reunite with your friends who left long ago. This mod pack features a fair deal of quests which provide a sense of progression and purpose and a mini storyline, making the mod pack feel more rewarding. There's also a shop interface to purchase food and drinks, books and ranged weapons, as well as an economy system with money that fuels it. Don't worry, there's also an in-game guide too to give you some hints and references along the way. This mod pack is great for lovers of space travel and who want to utilise a range of advanced rocketry and technology to traverse the universe and feel like they're on a mission for the greater good. Rebirth of the Night Rebirth of the Night is a favourite mod pack of many, one that encompasses many of the features, themes and mechanics of survival RPG games like Terraria and Seven Days to Die. This mod pack features its very own progression system, with its own lore, specialised mechanics and arts. The whole consensus of Rebirth is to make exploring much more dangerous, mysterious and unforgiving as you felt when first playing Minecraft, as well as making exploring and new discoveries feel fresh. This means nighttime is much harsher on the player, caves are deep and dark and chilling, and enemy mobs bring a heightened danger factor. All of these things that make exploration bring a lot more excitement than the usual. If exploration and adventure, progression and survival all intertwined is appealing to you, I would encourage you to try Rebirth as you'll see a much more expanded and built upon combat system, more dangerous creatures that will mine their way or build their way to get to you, and much more that make for a truly unforgiving world to jump into. The Last Dragon If you're a huge fan of the Dragon Ball Z show and its universe, you should be happy to play this pack as it will let you play as many of the races from the show, letting you train and become stronger to battle against tough enemies. The pack mainly focuses itself around the mod called Dragon Block C, a mod of course based upon Dragon Ball. This large extensive mod features a storyline, multiple races, forms, Kai attacks and an attack creator, an RPG based system with skills, weapons and scouters. There are also new dimensions with accompanying biomes and structures within. You can expect 
expect to witness brand new enemies including dragons that you can wish from. There's also a player group system and simple mini games which make playing multiplayer with a mod all the more fun, Infinity Fabric. This mod pack centres itself around adventure and combat in an RPG style in which you must craft powerful weaponry and equipment as you progress through the stages of the pack, having the option to utilise conventional weapons or use magic spells which you can learn too. You'll be able to do dungeon crawling and fight monsters and bosses in this pack, which is pretty fulfilling. The early game starts out with getting bone tools and the difficulty of the game will periodically and progressively increase and get tougher over time. Along with this, you should pay pretty sharp attention to your hunger levels, as well as your body temperature and moisture. These are important survival metrics. Wealth is now granted through monster slaying, meaning emeralds are no longer king. For boss slaying, the usual wither and ender dragon fights are now upgraded, meaning you can expect some changes and difficulty modifications to alter them. Astro Block 2 Lost in Space What would happen if you were floating through space past an asteroid belt and suddenly you lost communication with Earth? This mod pack story puts you in the shoes of an explorer lost in space when Earth vanishes off the map and there's no way back. The consensus of the pack is to find a planet that's habitable and survive on it. Space has a series of structures floating about, from wrecked cargo ships and mining rigs, unwrecked versions which are sometimes inhabited by mobs, space science laboratories and habituated and abandoned versions of alien bases. There's lots of exploring to do in this pack and if you're a fan of sci-fi this is worth a shot. Greg Block Greg Block is a skyblock experience which is based entirely around automation and factory based industrialization. If you're familiar with how dense and complex Greg Tech is then you'll see a little of the same theme here. With a bunch of smaller utility mods, this pack mainly focuses around 20 core content mods, with the goal of mass automation being the end point that you have to work towards. This is very time consuming to play, so don't go into it if you think it's going to be a breeze or a speedrun. The best approach is to optimise your time management and figure out a good progression path through the in-game challenges. The quest pack in here consists of around 800 total quests, with all of them relating to progression, telling you what you currently have access to and how to use it to your advantage. For unlocking and advancing through the mod pack's new ages, you'll unlock trophies and gain rewards for your efforts. Crazy Craft Updated This mod pack introduces a series of more than 100 brand new biomes, 5 all new dimensions akin to the overworld, the nether and the end, many new creatures and mobs mods which add more than 500 plus new creatures, many new dungeons, villages and structures totaling over 300, and more from 250 plus new mods that will offer a lot of time and hours that you can put into the pack. This is your typical kitchen sink pack but there's a lot of fans of Crazy Craft so this new rebranded version should entice a lot of them. Modern Skyblock 3 Departed If you don't want any changes to recipes but want quality Skyblock experience, this pack will offer that. It features a quest based progression line featuring over 1000 quests to tackle. There's three different modes in Modern Skyblock 3. Kitchen Sink mode that makes it much easier to reach an OP level stage quicker, staged mode where progression is based in a staged tier style that requires you to finish the previous mod's tiers in order to progress to the next, and also gated mode which is similar but you must progress through all mods and this mode cannot be rushed. Create on a potato. This mod pack is centred around the highly popular technology mod Create, offering a whole new way of automation and many new building possibilities to create awesome, amazing or inspiring contraptions. This pack was made for true create immersion whilst allowing it to run on lower end machines whilst accompanied with other mods. For an example, there are plans in the future to add quests to this pack too. This pack includes a set of nice quality of life mods with additions to armour, tools and weapons, farming, crafting, storage and many more new things and additions. This pack is mainly just for tech players who don't have the best hardware but still want to run some cool mods. Awakening Classic Light This pack is very close to the Awakening Classic pack and near enough complete in comparison, although it's a little stripped down in order to be a light pack, although you can actually join the same main servers that players with a full pack are running too, as the functionality of the mod pack and the quest progression are entirely identical, although certain client side mods adding visual enhancements or things like custom sounds and musics are removed in here in order to reduce the performance footprint of the pack to optimise it slightly to let less powerful machines experience it too. This pack has over 800 quests and a ton of mods that are configured to run alongside each other well, and it receives a lot of updates pretty regularly. Rad Pack Light This is a stripped down version
version of the roguelike adventures and dungeons pack in a more simplified and lighter version with certain options being lowered as in the case of world generation running perfectly fine on a machine with 2 gigabytes of ram and onboard graphics this pack is a roguelike dungeon crawling mod pack where there's a ton of different dungeons and structures to plunder for loot a pack that's a breath of fresh air if you're used to the hundreds of tech packs that are all the same and want something different something that's focused more on adventure and exploration and loot and fighting just like an RPG. In this pack you'll be slashing through dungeons whilst obtaining or crafting better gear and leveling up your skills to grow stronger in order to complete the quests in the pack and advance through their stages. But beware as the mobs will get stronger, they'll get better equipment and they'll grow in health points so there's definitely a challenge here too the longer that you play on it. Modded One Block If you know the One Block mode you'll love this pack. One Block is a game mode very similar to Skyblock, although you'll start on a singular block floating in stasis in midair, one that when broken will usually change into another block or provide limited resources each time in order to let you slowly expand the one block into multiple blocks and then eventually a full on sky island, as in skyblock. This is one block but modded meaning there's more mods thrown in here too to spruce up the experience. There's not a ton of mods though so it will run well on lower hardware machines. There's cooking for blockheads for food and kitchenware, bonsai trees to grow smaller trees, journey map, doggy talents and more little utilities or tomaton. So of course I had to include a tech pack for all you tech lovers, one that's highly focused upon encouraging you to build factories to automate procedures in game through the use of large multi-block machinery pieces. This is actually a questing mod pack too, one that has over 200 quests which will guide you through the major processes of the pack, with 98 mods meaning it should be fairly lightweight in comparison to many of the other kitchen sink ones. In the early game it's all about ore doubling before ramping up resource production. Once you acquire steel, you'll advance in power opportunities, gaining infrastructure to help organise resources and start automation before ramping up resources processing and power generation, eventually creating solar arrays and void miners, with mods allowing you to sidetrack yourself a little too to do a little bit of dungeon exploring in your off time. FTB Lite 3 This is a lightweight pack on 1.7.10 that's designed for beginners who are not too familiar with mods, or those who wanted a modded experience that's not too overwhelming for a computer that just simply can't withstand those big packs. This also works perfectly as a base pack if you want to add more mods or build off of it to create your very own mod pack a little more easily. The main mod, Fast Craft, which is included here will increase performance in your game a lot, although you'll have to enable it once you hop in game. Expect a more bare bones experience here but with some nice performance and utilities. Farming Valley Light I've always appreciated Farming Valley as a unique mod pack experience, that's why the light version deserves some appreciation too. A version that's easier to run but that still contains the main pack's features, letting it run with as little as 1GB of RAM and still receive up to 100 250 more FPS than the main pack can. This mod pack takes its inspiration inspiration from Stardew Valley and Harvest Moon, some of the best farming games, letting you build and maintain a small farm town to be able to progress in the game instead of the usual vanilla grinding protocols. Through spawning the goddess, you can progress in the pack by interacting with her as you build up a small town slowly and expand your farms, sell your crops to the store to gain some money and progress through the four different seasons which each offer special crops to buy that you can then plant and harvest. The local NPCs are the place that you can sell your goods to, and there's a ton of twists along the way, as well as an achievement book which offers guidance in the form of some long term goals to achieve and follow. Project Ozone Light With a limit of 135 mods, this is Project Ozone in the most lightweight form possible, made for computers that can't handle the main pack, made with performance and multiplayer as the main focus. This pack uses the better questing mod to grant many retrieval tasks to the player, quests that should detect no matter if you've unlocked it or not. For some context, Project Ozone is a skyblock based mod pack which starts you off in the sky and throw some challenges straight at you, letting you stay in the void world or advance to another dimension. Offering freedom of choice, although there's a limit upon lives, more difficult recipes and vanilla tool limitations in there also. MC Eternal Light MC Eternal just got lighter for those with low NPCs wanting to try it out, along with some fun little new additions which are sprinkled in there too, such as Astral Sorcery and Wizardry's Twilight Forest expansion. The MC Eternal mod pack is an adventure one with a focus upon exploration through magic and science as you follow the quest line as you engage in combat with many different mobs and bosses and work towards automation. This modded experience has plenty to discover with unique twists and 
and it's basically a kitchen sink pack which blends many of the fun parts of modern Skyblock, such as the quests, shop and RPG elements into an adventure pack with a huge emphasis on adventure, with severely underrated mods in the mod list. There's also some fun and wacky challenges like collecting 1 million dirt blocks, battling every boss or creating a Jaffa Cake factory and Hexit updated. This mod pack bases itself around the original Hexit pack. If you wanted to relive the experience of Hexit while exploring it with your friends, this mod pack is for you as it brings the original Hexit's mod list, but in a more reimagined way with some new dimensions and dungeons to satiate that feeling of what's missing, revolving around Hexit's nostalgia but with a facelift for eager adventurers. It's also important to note that Hexit 2 has actually released now, but this is more so for those who love the classic version. The cherry-picked mods bring new bosses and structures, diamonds are more common to allow for less grinding, and there's a litter of dungeons that wouldn't now spawn across the world, with many new performance-based mods like Better FPS, Vanilla Fix, and Phosphor for improving frame rates for lower-end hardware. Zombie Vault You're lost here in a rundown old city in which you're the last survivor, the one who is the last hope for humanity. Your best bet here is to avoid the darkness and always watch your back. Always bring a ton of food in case that you'll need to run away from threats and drain your hunger, and stay indoors in an illuminated spot at night just in case the blood moon rises and things turn into pure chaos. All you have to do is stay alive, and don't trust wolves because they'll want to eat you too. In an abandoned America, you'll find abandoned hospitals, apartment blocks, laboratories and civilizations living underground that are populated, or even come across abandoned or empty bunkers, each of them having their very own story and a mystery to solve with it. Raft Inspired by the popular survival game of the same name, this pack spawns you in the middle of a deep ocean, surrounded by absolutely nothing. Perhaps only small islands or drowned cities and structures. It's really dependent which world generator and the options for it that you actually tend to use. All you are given here is a wooden sword and shield, a fishing rod, some leather gear, and bread, and a boat that you can actually build upon. The key difference here is you're not just punching trees or mining to begin, so it's not a boring starting point. You have to fish, and this is how you get driftwood to craft planks and start to progress slowly. You could however swim very deep below to gather things, but you probably risk dying to some kind of sea monster below water. Horror Island You're in for a terrifying experience with this one. It comprises of many different horror themed mods that bring ghoulish enemies and monsters to the game, with everything from ghosts and phantoms to parasites, mutants, Doctor Who weeping angels, and so many more creepy ghosts. Most of these creatures are super dangerous, and there's always threats around the corner in the darkness. The whole idea is the same as vanilla, find food and resources, build a base and generally survive. You're just in a much darker and harsher world than what you may usually be used to. For an example, the Blood Moon mod will summon an event in which the sky is pure red, and every mob is much more dangerous throughout this time, and spawns are altered, so it's best to stay inside or deep underground where other dangers may still lie. Dark Souls Simulator this pack hosts a series of different modifications that are combined together with the goal of aiming to simulate the Dark Souls video game experience within Minecraft with a pre-configured epic fight mod, some minor tweaks, an action RPG and adventure style accompanying mods to turn it into an RPG fighter. The camera system is altered too, in order to play from a completely different perspective and point of view. There's enhanced visuals for the butchering of mobs and monsters, dynamic surroundings for new environmental effects and crispier sounds better biomes for more atmospheric immersion, as well as both Mousy's mobs and the Ice and Fire mod for some tough fantasy bosses to test your fighting skills against. Lucky Block Challenge With a combination of the hilarious Orspawn mod and the Spiral Lucky Block, this pack is a simple one that adds structures and other cool stuff to the game. For those that don't know Orspawn, it's basically a joke mod which is infamous for being the so-called Minecraft girlfriend mod, which is pretty funny, but there's some pretty awesome other mods in there along with some overpowered armor and weaponry too. Although there's also the custom NPCs mod in this pack for some roleplay purposes and to set up custom trades and populate villagers. This is actually a really basic pack and it mainly has a ton of downloads just because it's old, but the lucky block experience is always a fun one and you're in for a surprise, so I thought featuring this one was pretty worth doing so. The Winter Rescue Your motive here is to use your hands to fuel mankind's last hope of survival in the snow by creating utilities to survive 
inside the temperature system. Mine four minerals in a land with 30 different rock lead tiers, fend off extinct beasts like woolly mammoths and saber tooth tigers, start from humble flint tools and advance to industrial multi block machinery systems, and build your own steampunk base for the full automation of literally everything. Protection and generation two to defend yourself from the harsh winter climate and to survive within it. This is another one of those unique survival concept packs which are seemingly becoming more popular recently and ones which I just seem to keep covering and for good reason. SCP Exemption I played the new SCP Pandemic game on Steam recently which has put me back in the mood of SCP and its fandom which is why I'm covering the SCP Exemption mod pack this month, a pack that uses the popular SCP Lockdown mod which adds a ton of content from the SCP universe into the game, with a large array of new block sets for building your very own facilities and countless spawn eggs for brand new mobs for the SCP anomalies and security personnel in order to populate your new builds with for a true containment breach experience. There's also a few tech mods sprinkled in here too to actually thicken out the base with different things like computers and machinery to make it feel a bit more immersive and just like an SCP facility. Advent of Ascension Plus This mod pack is based upon the Advent of Ascension Dimension mod. This pack boasts over 20 plus new dimensions with 100 or more brand new additional biomes, 35 plus new bosses and new encounters, 500 plus all new mob types, 15 new skill sets, a gated magic system which is behind the AOA dimension mod, and a supporting server which you can choose to play on. The pack will also appeal to you quest mod pack lovers, as it comes set with north of 800 quests that will guide you along the way on the journey as some type of outline to tell you what to actually do. The positive and the upside to this pack is that it's a no tech pack, meaning it's not yet another factory mod pack, just full of tons of tech mods like a kitchen sink one. It's more of an RPG and adventure style one. The quest system comes with multiple different tiers that you can progress through, which are actually categorised very nicely to sort through them, along with some extra completionist category tabs for some extra challenges and rewards to do after. Forever Stranded Lost Souls Most will be familiar with the original Forever Stranded mod pack, in which you crash land on a space jet plane onto an arid planet. This mod pack is the successor to the original, placing you in a brand new world in a similar situation to the previous. After getting the ship back up and running on the last planet, the hyperdrive went into meltdown, causing you to be where you are in this pack. Pretty much the same situation. The goal of this pack is very similar in the sense that you have to learn to survive in a situation outside of your comfort zone, against enemies that aren't welcoming to your arrival on their world and will do anything and everything to finish you off. You'll have to start out from humble beginnings and work up the tech and magic trees to help ward off the hordes of monsters on the planet, with requirements for certain skills being needed for the various tools, making XP spending important in terms of what you will choose to use it on. Undead Cities this mod pack is all about surviving the undead apocalypse and any other dangerous creatures which are lingering around in a huge endless cities. In this pack, mobs are far more brutal. They're smarter, faster and stronger than you've ever seen them before, and they'll do anything and everything to get to you. Your purpose is to explore the remains of these forsaken cities and gather resources within them to get stronger and also build a base to defend yourself whilst crafting melee and ranged weaponry. There's a lot of danger in this pack, so you'll always have to be careful. For an example, there's black rain that will blind you, you can't sleep, there's higher spawn rates for the hostile monsters, there's mutant creatures that offer a real heightened threat, special environmental effects like the blood moon, as well as mob invasions and undead mobs that have the ability to build up and mine their way through blocks to reach you. Because of this, the best strategy is to actually build a sky base because it's the only way that you can literally avoid these tougher mobs as it will be very hard, if not impossible, for them to reach you this way. And you can use modular turrets and fences around your place of salvation for some added defense if your mind isn't totally at rest. It's hard to gather resources here because you'll be hunted everywhere so you'll have to bring a weapon which is pretty mandatory when you're exploring. Techit 1.6.4 I always feature Techit Classic in these mod lists for nostalgia but this time I'll be covering the standard Techit mod pack, you know the more modernized one. This pack still runs on a slightly older build on 1.6.4 though but it does have a ton of great new mods. This mod pack was the new era of tech at the time in which the basis was to reach the space age to lift off and reach new pockets in space and planets in the universe, a perfect pack to play with friends as you crush through the other dimensions. For players who love both tech mods and the general idea of space travel, this pack is perfect as it has a blend of everything and it brings some mods from Tekkit Classic, although not many and also not all of them. You will see mods like Buildcraft though for machinery and
and pipes or quarries, atomic science for high-tech nuclear power, Balkan's weapons mod for more melee weapons, modular power suits for some high-tech, high-powered tech suits, mine factory reloaded for methods of automatically farming plants and animals, and using new railways. Project Red is here too for the extension of the redstone system, and simply jetpacks for a little bit of added bonus fun. Hexit 2. Many people loved the original Hexit pack, it's one that I featured in these lists before, along with the Hexit updated pack also. But in the recent last few months, the sequel pack Hexit 2, the official one, has been released now. This pack is the successor to the original Hexit, but with countless new and exciting mods to take a fresh take upon it. This mod pack features plenty to explore in the world, with an abundance of new and old challenges. You'll be exploring deep dark dungeons, climbing towering spires, delving into weathered ruins, and reading dusty old tomes, laying claim to riches, and unearthing artifacts along the way. There's something for everyone in this pack, letting you utilise magic or become a farmer or conqueror of the many dungeons and castles found across the lands. Hack slash mine. If Minecraft was the greatest 3D action RPG title, then it would probably be hack slash mine. This mod pack features randomised dungeons to crawl through which are littered with magical loot and hordes of new monsters. You'll have to utilise the many customisable spells whilst exploring randomly generated areas to uncover new zones, whilst playing as one of the three classes and four different races in a world with new dimensions. This is an action RPG fantasy mod pack with a slew of unique features that makes it super fun. Big Dig this pack is mostly centred around a new kind of world generation, in which new large and more frequent ore veins are present. Making it a little easier to mine and with the new fat veins will mean that you'll be spending far much less time collecting resources and shifting that focus to experiment with some of the best mods in this hefty mod list which is featured here. Not enticed yet? What about taming and riding chocobos from Final Fantasy? Or building a factory of your dreams with countless processing machines and power units to melt down all your ores? You'll have access to better storage for more storage options and crates with locks and keys, computer craft for the use of Lua based computer system programming, equivalent Exchange 3 which is the original Project E mod for transmutation and alchemy, forestry for maintaining bees and similar features, as well as thermal expansion for some extra tech machinery for an example. Pixel Mod Generations Official This official mod pack is updated frequently, based upon the original Pixel Mon 1.12.2 mod. This mod pack includes a 100% Pokedex including all from the Sword and Shield titles, all forms of Pokemon in game including all Mega and Primal evolutions and Ultra Burst, every Z move and Z crystal, Totem and Mega boss Pokemons for unique challenges and new rewards, new Pokedex, special skins for the special Pokemon, 100% support in the recipe book for easier crafting and understanding of the mod and its elements, tons of new Pokemon sounds which are added in, naturally spawning structures which total over 42, cosmetic player models with new backpacks and hats to wear for more immersion, all new particles, NPC skins, over 77 new special crafting and ability tools, combat enhancing items, 250 additional decoration blocks, new utility blocks and items and so much more to extend the original Pixelmon to make it feel more like a voxelized Pokemon title. The Dalek mod. This mod pack is centered around the mod of the same name, a mod that adds a variety of features from the BBC show Doctor Who into Minecraft, including a fully working TARDIS, Dalek mobs, Cybermen, and more to encapsulate the Doctor Who experience within the game, as you play solo or with friends and travel in the TARDIS to brand new worlds, and battle bosses to become the best Time Lord, with the ability to travel to iconic places like the homeworld of the Daleks, Scaro, the Time Lord planet Gallifrey, Trenzalore, and much more. There's gas mask zombies, like the ones you've seen in the Empty Child episode, TARDISes that are way bigger on the inside, sonic screwdrivers, and much more, with features that let you make your own Daleks, making your own army, planets, and eras in time. Modern Era This mod pack intends to simulate real life through the use of many mods, adding real life things to the game such as professionally 3D modelled cars and vehicles with steering wheels like the Bugatti Veyron, Lamborghini Aventador, and many more popular car models. New decoration mods like DecoCraft to simulate the interior furniture 
placement and design of modern houses, with working appliances like showers, toilets, fridges and ovens, carpenters blocks for smaller blocks for decoration, railcraft for building more modernistic and realistic railways, and many other awesome decorative modifications for building a really cool modernized city, Wizard Academy. In this mod pack, the world relies heavily upon survival through the means of your own magical skills, with wizards being the elite class. The story behind this one is that you've been learning the craft of magic since your childhood in order to face the hostile world, a place that's tough without the means of defense. This pack has some feelings of FTB with the whole mysticism and magical aspect, but with some real world brutality of raiding and PvP mechanics. This isn't about cozy towns and village communities, this is about pure grit survival and combat in a tough relentless world, where defending yourself, upgrading your arsenal of magic and skills, and creating defenses along the way is the only way to keep breathing. The Classic Pack the Classic Pack is a personal favourite of mine because it encompasses everything that made the original Tekkit Classic mod pack so great and brings all these memorable mods into newer versions of the game in a classical experience, letting you delve into the mysteries of magic, create a factory or play with a balanced playstyle between the two. Referred to as the new Tekkit Classic, the Classic Pack has the thematic goal of offering nostalgic gameplay through classic mods from that pack. For lovers of the original Tekkit Classic, you should be at home with this one, featuring 212 mods of the likes of Nether Ores, Buildcraft, Computercraft, Ender Storage, Extreme Reactors, Industrial Craft 2, Iron Chess, Project Red, and a ton of more memorable ones and many new ones added to the lineup. This is basically Tech It Classic, but upgraded with a lot more sprinkled on top for newer builds of the game. Beyond Bees are a great addition to the game, but why not upgrade them? Beyond is a mod pack centered around the resourceful Bees mod that adds a fair deal of new bee types to assist the player in acquiring requiring plentiful resources, many created solely for this pack, so you'll see a lot of custom bees with different tasks that they can achieve which are only seen within this mod pack. The quest book will help guide you across your journey when playing, and you'll be able to use a nice range of both technology and magic mods whilst playing, with less than 100 mods bundled in here too, so I don't think you'll need an insane PC to actually be able to run this one. Infernal RPG With 11 custom new origins which are built around MMO style classes like DPS, tanks and healers, this pack aims to push difficulty and skill requirements to a level above the norm. Mob levels are expanded, they have enhanced AI, faster spawn rates at night time, scaling difficulty, and there's more bosses and dimension progression scaling. The biomes are now more varied and more abundant, and the brand new skill system lets you upgrade key stats like strength, dexterity, intelligence, and more in order to gain massive buffs to help with gameplay. Many repurposed structures, dungeons, and keeps are available to explore and tackle, and many new weaponry like pirate weapons, Greek armor sets, and more are available, as well as equipable trinkets and artifacts and all new enchantments to utilize. The key thing you'll notice here is the HUD has been improved with all new elements like an added compass, new health bars, the display of item durability and their stats, and potion effects and their current durations. There's enhanced sound effects and more general immersion in the surroundings that you'll notice when trekking through the world. Blessed or Cursed Expedition to Infinite Force This is an interesting mod which is based upon the Slash Blade and Lastsmith mods, in which you're a bladesmith with the goal to craft, collect and strengthen your blade set in order to slay enemies and extract power from these weapons to craft more advanced ones, finally letting you gain the infinite heart to grant immortality towards the edge of the playtime. Following the main line which is set by the last smith mod, with advancements unlocked one by one, you have a fair amount of craftables up to a very high level with a guidebook to help you along the way, as well as a few easter eggs which the mod pack authors have scattered throughout which you can expect to see during play. Jurassic World World Reborn number 2. The prehistoric times are so interesting to learn about, but what's even better is experiencing it for yourself with some mods. This mod pack brings an open world adventure experience in a prehistoric world with prehistoric flora and fauna and a huge amount of different dinosaur species as well as some fantasy dragons in there too. With dungeons and structures like temples across the world and new dimensions to explore, this pack offers a more modernized experience with brand new mod 
modernistic weapons, such as those from the Tech Gun mod, and many key foes to be aware of, like bandits and military personnel, which offer danger to the player and make survival even harder. There are 91 different creatures in total in the dinosaurs mod in here, across the dinosaurs, marine reptiles, prehistoric fish, animals, and the hybrid species. Origins Adventure This adventure mod pack utilizes many elements of traditional MMO games, in which you can pick a unique class and race upon starting to determine how your adventure will play out. Using the Origins mod, you'll notice each race has unique abilities, such as phantoms phasing through walls or flying around with a complementary elytra. You'll explore a vast range of different biomes and find advancing beyond netherite is possible, with the new ore additions in here which you can make into armor. With a completely reworked new nether and new end dimension, you'll experience dozens of new dimensional biomes within and some super cool creatures which now inhabit them. The goal is to gather resources and get to space. The great thing about the Origins mod is just how unique it makes each and every single playthrough to make things less bland. Sky Fabrication 2 This tech progression based 1.17.1 pack is one with 130 quests that will also help to teach you the key basics of technology and other supplementary mods in here, and it's a mod pack that gives you a fair deal of freedom without thousands of overbearing quests or over complications. You'll also see some magic and exploration style mods thrown in there too for some added enjoyment. The pack basically goes through stages, the stone age where you first start out your island and gather the very basics, build cobblestone generators and work towards the nether portal, the bronze age where making a smeltery and smelting ores is key, modern industrialization where electricity is king, other technologies where you gain access to the other tech mods, the magical age which will break you away from the tech path and lets you explore something different, and the age of exploration which will take you to other dimensions and space planets. You'll also experience different seasons within the world. This will affect many things within it such as winter inhibiting crop growth for an example. Cuboid Outpost Imagine being stranded on a barren planet where life is wildly different to what you once knew. This is what Cuboid Outpost is as a general experience, situating you at Cuboid Outpost 42 which is a survival facility with minimal supplies, but some decent equipment on offer. The Cuboid Corp Science Division have triggered a chain reaction, causing an imminent complete annihilation of your planet, but if you're lucky enough, you'll follow the survival guide to survive the oncoming storm and restart life in the other dimensions. This is a beginner to intermediate tech based pack which offers something a little bit different, and you can expect a similar experience to Skyblock but without the Skyblock type world. A plethora of custom quests, new items, blocks, ores and machinery, a different path to get to the vanilla dimensions aka the nether in the end, as well as mods which upgrade the experience within them, and a mod pack that you'll enjoy taking your time to progress through and not really feel a sense of rushing. Sky Farm Inspired by Sky Factory 4, this mod pack boasts 260 plus mods, and it's a mod pack in which the main focus is upon growing crops through the mystical agriculture mod, as the primary way of acquiring your resources, with the perk of using crouch with shift to grow crops even faster. Who knew the tea bag was useful for something other than trolling? There's also a custom set of advancements in the advancements window which serve as an in-game guide which will show you the progression path that you'll need to take. There's a fair few custom world types in the generator in this one, and a nice deal of end game blocks and items to work towards to advance your skyblock island if you're up to the challenge. The Nuclear Wasteland You'll be exploring a whole new nuclear wasteland in this pack as you'll be fighting above or below ground in the new cave systems, being cautious of the new monsters that have emerged during the disaster, ones with new harmful abilities. You'll have to construct a base equipped with defences such as turrets and specialised machines to attempt to survive, but as you explore deeper into the wasteland and reap its rewards, the threat level will also increase. Crips and Creepers This pack has its own storyline and lore, which is based upon the slimes which were added as a new humanoid race that have mysteries to discover as well as similar looking mini pets which you can collect. This pack boasts over 50 original soundtracks, a vast playable map with some deep lore and dense detail, text dialogue with in-game mobs and the possession of creatures to allow for roleplay and an enthralling quest based campaign story that you'll be sure to run into trouble when tackling. This mod pack looks like a very promising project which promises a whole lot of fun with a unique story and concept. Horrorcraft 
This mod pack is designed around having a dark, unforgiving world that you can play in that warps Minecraft into something different, where the daytime is peaceful, but the nighttime is an anxiety tripping calamity experience that will make you scared of the dark. Exploring a cave system with just a few torches is something of horrors here, as you'll hear sounds and echoes of distant monsters from the darkness, and without light, some of them might even get you. With a looming chance of blood moons at nighttime to buff the monsters around you, pitch black nighttime cycles and darker caves, more dangerous zombies with AI that draws them to sounds, light and blood, and a new sanity level system that lets you go crazy. This pack is one which you have to try to tackle, but also beware of. Dark RPG. This dark themed fabric mod pack is an RPG pack with a ton of mods fitting for new role playing games, letting you start the game off with the Origins mod in which you can both pick a race and a class and play through the game with custom modifiers and abilities as well as weaknesses. With some performance enhancing mods and better terrain gen from the Terralith mod, you can explore all of the 1.18 content in this pack as it's on the newest update. The pack has useful utility mods like a mini map and full on world map. As as well as better visuals such as connected textures and glass and new falling leaf particles and a custom skybox and dynamic lights for torches. There's also questing on offer for some achievement and guidance when adventuring. Terraria Craft Mod Pack this mod pack is based upon the Terraria Craft mod, but with some companion mods such as a new coloured lighting engine and an expansion to the depth and height of the world. Terraria Craft is a Minecraft mod that aims to recreate the game Terraria in 3D within the Minecraft engine by adding many of the biomes, NPCs as mobs and content such as ore blocks, building blocks and much more for simulation in the overworld. The mod is made by the same team that brought us the Dragonfire mod and it brings custom terrain generation which shows shows bigger and deeper caves and more new features and mechanics on a finite island rich in resources and alternative biomes as you fight against mobs for survival and progression just like you do in Terraria. It blends two of my favourite games together and makes for a really unique mod, Engineer's Life 2. This tech based mod pack has a big focus around immersive engineering. From gathering flint for the first few tools to creating multi-block complex machinery and scaling up your factories and creating windmills and water wheels, this mod pack has everything from big to small additions to almost every aspect of play. The pack is a step up from its predecessor, having more straightforward but complex progression, a better guide and generally being more player friendly. With custom and more realistic recipes, balanced but challenging gameplay, immersive machinery, more options for food and farming, easier mining with vein miner and changing seasons, you can expect to see a lot of great content in here such as dungeons and improved vanilla structures as well as many new blocks and material options. It's an all-in-one for people who love tech but also like exploring on the side. Fabulously optimized. This fabric mod pack is all about optimization and enhancing the game with specifically functional mods to improve the performance and bring graphical enhancements to vanilla Minecraft. The mods in here add very small changes to systems such as the advancement window by expanding the information displayed, adding borderless full screen mode, improvements for better screenshots, better dynamic dynamic lighting, and Sodium, which is a new rendering engine mod for Minecraft that improves frame rates, reduces micro stutters, and offers graphical fixes. This along with a companion mod with Sodium to offer an improved compatibility with Optifine Shader Set that improves Sodium support for most shaders since the pack uses that in favour of using Optifine instead. Crucial 2 The Refresh Update Crucial 2 is one that focuses itself on being a vanilla plus style pack with enhancements to the world gen in game and a list of fine tuned mods. Each mod has been slowly handpicked and configured for performance. The pack is considerate to different players, offering options for adventurers, builders, redstone engineers or collectors alike. Using a special data pack, mods for expanding biomes, cave system upgrades, better dungeons and structure mods, as well as a sprinkle of brand new mobs and better loot to seek, there's a lot of adventure potential specifically in this pack. An upside of the pack is its documentation, explaining everything about the pack in game which shows its recipes, mechanics and the exact places which you need to go to to obtain the items and to get further in the pack's progression system. Create above and beyond. 
This mod pack is tech-centered, based upon advancing through science and technology, with around 50 inventions before reaching the moon, with the main goal of getting to space. You'll go through a series or sequence of crafting and tinkering to advance to the next technology tier, expanding your factory every step along the way. The early game is rather slow, but progression pace accelerates as you begin to master automation in your processes. There's everything from alchemical research and transmutation, to crystal washing and conveyor belt systems. You can earn coins by selling your items or by performing jobs in a chosen progression to prevent too much grinding. RL Craft. Starting out as a simple project, RL Craft has turned into an absolute monster in Minecraft culture, known for being extremely challenging and totally unforgiving. Meaning real life or realism, this mod pack is a mix of pure survival, adventure and RPG, and just straight up immersion, with a ton of high difficulty mods individually tweaked for the mod pack to work alongside each other. You'll find everything from fire-breathing dragons to demonic mobs, a temperature system with thirst, all new structures, dungeons and more. I featured RL Craft before, however I'm featuring it again due to the huge new update that they recently put out for the mod pack. After more than a year after the last update dropped, RL Craft now has all new quests, hats, content for the nether, expansions to the caves and underground and more. There's now a total of 340 brand new quests added to the pack, an entire overhaul of the taming system which changes the mounts, pets and saddles, a rebalance of the weapons from the Spartan weaponry mod, improvements to damage reduction to a lot of the armor tiers, and a rework to the battle towers mod, as well as much better AI for the bosses and general boss progression. You'll also see things like better fishing mechanics and loot from the catchers, better enchantments, and just so much more than I can list. Our World Craft's big update makes it definitely playable for people who have actually tackled the pack. And that concludes this video on the Minecraft multiplayer mod packs. Let me know which of these mod packs was your favourite one and why in the comments section down below. And if you have any other Minecraft mod packs which are great to play with friends which I missed out of this video, tell me about those too. And if you found a mod pack which you liked, make sure to give the video a like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.